testing, testing, one, two. So I need to go ahead. There we go. Let's see, let's see, trade. Good morning, Daniel. We in here. So uh, today we got AIMD up 142%, SGD up 59%, IMUX up 20%, and then one that uh, you know I didn't, I, I saw, and I thought I wanted to trade it, but I just could not get with that catalyst, and I got really. Uh, kind of on edge when they got that offering. But uh, sometimes offerings can be good, but a lot of times in, in small caps, offerings are not so good. Uh, but we'll see. AIMD though, let's pop over here on the larger time frames. So monthly chart, we can see this thing has some huge rips when it did rip. Look at that, from uh, what, 99 cents up to 470 in one that was one month we'll see what happens when we get down to the daily um on this month it went all the way out what another dollar another dollar so let's see on the weekly charts yep all in one week basically daily chart let's see what your daily chart is looking like okay so it gets spicy on the daily chart huh Did a double top and then came back down from the two. So what gaps do it does it have to fill today? And also, what's the news on this one? AIMD, it regains compliance with NASDAQ. Okay. So another compliance catalyst on Friday. Looking on the hour chart, we can see it had a nice move two up to 333. 330s up to about 430. So about dollar moves there uh, in pre-market though. We'll see what the actual sentiment is on the open. Let's jump back over here. SGD is another one that popped up. Okay. So moved from 139 up here to the right under the 250s. Kind of playing there. Let's see what it's catalyst is or if any of these had catalysts earlier this week rather because it's friday i think yeah it's friday so let's see 124 safe green corporation announces entry into country contribute or what announces Contribution agreement with affiliate MNO partners to joint venture. Okay, eighty million dollars. That was back on the fourth. So it's got it's got a little bit of news uh, from yesterday on SGD. So it may have a little bit more action. I'll definitely see what kind of action that gets. And then IMUX. Let's see if it had anything earlier this week. Announces a private placement. Private placement of $240 million. Okay. And that's pretty much just news repeated. So just repeat it for the algos to kind of see that. Um, so at first they filed a shelf registration in November and then and then actually did the placement here in December. So they did just recently do a shelf registration. Okay. So SGD is uh, looking like it's going to be interesting today. Interesting. Let's go over here and look at the daily chart and the uh, larger time frame so we don't get tunnel vision on the 15 minute. This thing has only been trading for one, two, three, four months, five months. 
total. So not a whole lot of trading history. I'm glad I looked at the, the larger time frame. So this means there, there isn't a lot of data points here. And you have to, if you're going to trade this, you definitely got to take the, uh, the most obvious on the lower time frames. So reached up here on his first IPO day to 1050, came all the way back down, did that same move again, but up here to eight, I'm like the eight thirties. And now it's right here, uh, where, where's it trading? 213, 213, somewhere in here. So right around that 211 level, let's jump down to a lower time frame. Right above that and see if it'll hold the two thirteens. Does have a little bit of a gap that was kind of filled, but not with a body candle. So what four nineteen to four or to three sixty nine there. I'll get rid of some of these uh higher up levels. I don't really know if it's gonna go that far. I'm just looking for the gaps at this point. It's got a little level to cross up here at the 379 to the 409. Okay. So that is on the four hour chart. Definitely looks possible. It needs to get over the 260s though. Break over 260s and it may get a push. On the hour chart, we can see a nice little gap here. 140 up here to the 155s. We will see what what this thing wants to do. So 150s, um, we'll see if it comes down there. If it comes all the way down here, um, that's, I mean, it's, it's got to give some type of pop, right? 150s, but it's also buying pressure here at the 188 to the 176. And then there's a little bit more. So we need to see where the actual support is, where people kind of jump in there. All right, AIMD. So AI, AIMD actually has a weaker catalyst than SGD, but SGD is a continuation from this uh, earlier this week. So I don't know which one to focus on. IMUX Piton. Let's see what. Oh, the spy did come on down a little bit through that 470. So spy has been descending these past couple of days. What one, two, three, four, five, almost five days. And I know they. I think they just released the jobs reports or something. Uh, or are they? They're going to release them today. Let me go ahead and look at that. U.S. economy adds two two hundred thousand or 216,000 jobs shocking Wall Street again. Okay, where did they add them to? Let's see, curriculum, the labor market added 200 blah, blah, blah in the month of December, up from 173 uh, the previous month. But where are they adding these jobs to? Economists had expected an un the unemployment rate to tick higher. Investors were closely watching the report for signs of whether the Federal Reserve can achieve a so-called soft landing. Jobs report remains robust. Okay, so 22, 22, 23, 23. Unemployment rate came, I mean, Hasn't really been a huge change in unemployment. It looks kind of like it's uh just kind of flat there, but but I guess it it moved up a little bit. Um, what we are seeing with uh co companies is insistent hiring, especially small businesses. Of course, small businesses. Are, are trying to get in there because they got they got to keep up with these big guys that have the big investors so it's kind of like a balancing game you you eliminate having to get somebody that's like a billionaire by getting like a hundred 
thousand heirs or a, a thousand thousand heirs, right? A hundred million heirs, you know. So of course they're gonna be trying to keep up, but they still gotta pay their people, and they gotta keep up with inflation as well. Pay increase gap between job switchers and job stayers. Uh, yeah, stay at your job and build out that experience, build out knowing the people and stuff like that. And, you know, you may not get paid. Okay. But you may enjoy your job better because you built those relationships out. You're not continually jumping into a new fire. Trying to build up yourself. All right, let's jump over here and look at the spy. So in December, um, we saw the spy come out into what looked like a double top. And I was like, man, this thing's up here at this double top. I don't know what it wants to do, but this looks like a double top. And so I was already like, I think we're going to see a, at least a little bit of a pullback, right? And so that's pretty much what we've seen off of this 470 back down here to the 467s. Uh, just a couple of days of kind of like calm down, you know, let the let the uh, the market kind of see where it wants to go. And that's what we've been seeing over these last couple of days with these gap downs here. Let's jump over to the NQ. Good morning, Laura Lee. NQ, same thing, came into this double top. Now, it actually broke out of the double top, but I didn't trust it because we know most breakouts fail. So when it came in and it and it broke this double top, I was like, yeah, that looks good. But statistically, double tops are notorious for coming, and breakouts in general are notorious for pulling back before they go higher. So... Looking at the daily chart coming down here to what the bottom of the 16 16,337 mark but yeah uh this this week i only really saw one thing that was interesting but i just lost my appetite for it which was dyn uh here dyn came crashing down here went up to 29 dollars fell all the way down here to $12. And I was like, man, and it was on a muscular dystrophy uh, presentation. So there was a, a presentation or a, a conference where they you know, showed what they had been doing. Yes, they had some positive results and things, but I was just like, I don't know. And that was on this day right here on, um, on the third right here when it came down here and i was like i just don't know and it just grinded 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 but it didn't get the the big relative volume didn't get the interest of the people and then it came here on this uh pre-market pre-market day and they got an offering they put out an offering for us um like 175 million shares or offering of of 175 million worth of shares and i was like ooh, that may be bad but on the open, this thing rips from 13 up here to 20. And I was like, well, you know, I'd rather not be a part of that offering. And then in aftermarket, we see 19 gaps back down to 18 and then back to this 1726, which I saw up here is, you know, possible uh, resistance that it will run into. But it's looking like it may hold it as support. But at this point, it just doesn't have the volume that it had on these last two days. And I'm just like, whatever. Looking at the daily chart, um, you know, coming through here, we saw it before when before it came and tested this level before at the 15s. And I was like, hmm, 15 could be interesting, but I just do not like a presentation catalyst. All they're doing is presenting, you know, a couple of data points. And it wasn't like crazy data. Right. It was just like, you know. We got we got like a twenty cent twenty percent increase in some of these some of these studies and stuff like this and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I would rather see like 30, 40, 50 percent, 60 percent, but it's whatever. That was the one that from this week that I was like on the fence about. 
and I just didn't touch because I they, once that offering came out, I definitely didn't want to get into it because I was like, this thing could slam at any time. But you know, turns out it did not. But for today, the three that we're kind of looking at is is uh, AIMD, SGD, and IMUX. Now I don't know if IMUX is going to compete with these other two because I really didn't see any kind of close catalyst. I see that they did the shelf registration coming into today, and then um, and then they did the private placement offering. But that's really not the news that most people are looking for. Now, I did see on SGD on the 15 minute, um, it had this sell off into this area. This area received buying to, uh, multiple times here. So I'm wondering, would this be an interesting level to watch here uh, around the 175s here? Now, it is coming down to this level right now. And I just don't think it's going to get all the way to the 150s, man. 150s is a long drop. It, it drops down there. It might not come back. But doing a 175 bounce and then coming and reclaiming the $2, that seems plausible. You know, but it's on continuation anyway. So, yeah, we got our... I might take iMux off. I just don't trust iMux. We got our top two we're watching. 177 tested three times there. Actually, if we look over here on the four hour or the hour chart, we can see that th this area down here at the 177 has been traded in before. Back here on these prior days, whatever day this was, uh, the December 14th, this was traded in, so it could be an area that was resistance that gets a little bit of a bounce as support. Right through here. And that's the only way you can really trade these is just look back at the most obvious support, you know. Um because it does it, it doesn't even have a year of trading yet. Get rid of some of these top ones. They too many lines start to confuse me. I like to look at zones. So right now the zone would be 189 to 175 that I was looking at. And then it was trading around this 211, but I could take that off. I don't really know if it's gonna stay up there. All right. So we have about 10 minutes to the bell. We got two main watchers uh, today. And I want to see what they want to do. And actually, let me go and look at the actual news around that's popping out here other than the jobs report. Semiconductor sectors rocketed 73% higher in 2023, but these three players still look like bargains. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Trader makes massive bet treasuries uh, will get slammed after jobs report. He may be wrong. He may get slammed. Uh, investing. Uh, okay. That's, that's, I'm looking for latest news. Okay. Global food prices declined for record record or from record highs in 2022. The UN says. U.S. stocks, December jobs, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's bounce over to this one. All right. Freed on parole, recruitment. Okay, so that's all over there. Let's go back to home. Well, he's here too, okay. Young people turning to AI therapist bots. Well, they won't listen to any humans, so, you know. 
I feel that. Listen to a robot that knows all. <laughs> that robot's like, now go to your roof. <laughs> oh man. Go to your rooftop. Take a gander over the side. What is the point? Ask uh, disillusioned voters ahead of the polls. Many Bangladeshis say the the general election is foregone. Conclusion? Yeah, probably. Neptune and Uranus finally seen through in true colors. Okay, that's cool. Probably the most interesting thing here. Uranus. Early Voyager 2. Reprocess images. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, there is not a lot of difference between that blue and that blue. But okay, it's like just a little bit lighter blue. Now, Neptune, though, that is, that's a big difference. Like, this is like, looks like a marble ball. Okay. All right, let's go to business. Tesla recalls more than 1.6 million cars in China. The issues have the issues with assisted driving functions and door locking systems will be fixed by remote updates. Okay. Major Chinese shadow bank files bankruptcy. Trump firms paid by foreign nations say Democrats uh, can Denmark's world beating drugs make drugs makers stay ahead? Don't know. Future of business. AI again. So will we see any kind of any other AI surges coming up here with, with the prices of food coming down and all this? Will we see uh, some more technical surges in, in the upcoming weeks or months? Is the question because I mean we continually see AI everywhere. Um, where will hotter heat pumps win over home owners? Hotter heat pumps. Could there be a gold rush from buried hydrogen? Probably not because it's not gold. Uh, let's see. Red gold. It's not seeing a whole lot. Let's go and look at BAM SEC on these two that we're watching AIMD. No shelf registrations. Also, let's look at the floats as well. We got about six minutes left. This one is SGD floating right at $2 right now. And do we have any other ones? Nope, our mux is going down. No other savers out here. Short squeeze AM AIMD. Do they even have any information over here yet? Short percentage increase. Nope, it decreased by 86%. People are not trying to jump on that train ride. But this is 20 minutes delayed, so may be different than SGD. Nothing. Okay. SGD. SGD uh, has a float of 3.45 million. 3.45 million, very low float on that one. AMD, AIMD has a float of under a million in the float. So very, could be very volatile stocks here. AIMD. Yep, under a million in the float over here at Pinviz as well.
Yep. Okay. All righty. Well, four minutes left. And time is slowing down on a Friday. All right, all right. Two minutes. Lori Lee, good morning, Mike D. Um, Lori says AMD is a buy at 350. Let's look at that. 350. That's the previous level that was traded upon. Let's look at the higher time frames on it. 350. So 350. Um course it's been up to 350 before you just be looking for it to just hold that level and then down here it's got like around the two dollars really um mm -hmm. that that kind of starts that dissension back into the abyss let's look at the daily chart here yeah two dollars but we'll see we'll see what kind of reaction it gets out of the open Less than a minute thirty to go. Right. All right, SGD coming on down to this zone that we were looking at right above the 175. AMD hasn't really moved much off of that $4 though. Gonna need to make a decision. I keep saying AMD, AIMD. I hate when they have ticker names that's so close to big tickers. All right. So we'll watch AIMD out of the open and see if SGD gets down there to that 170 mark. Whew. Almost all of the other stocks are just uh, going bread immediately. We'll see how that goes. SGD, small bounce off of the two. Almost got into this little zone here. Looks like a double bottom here at 190s. We'll probably see that crack down in a little bit. See it try to press into this zone first to try to see what that 175 is about. AIMD doing a similar move. Uh, the ATR on AIMD is 49 cents. ATR on SGD is 37 cents. Relative volume on AIMD is 329 times. The, re the regular relative volume, reg uh, relative standard deviation seven times outside of the norm of regular. SGD, uh, relative standard deviation isn't even two times out. 
I'm looking right here on my scanner for this and um, relative volume only seven times the norm. So AIMD definitely getting the majority of the, the push right now. And then we see SGD. Now remember, this is a continuation stock. So I don't really know what it wants to do, but it is entering the zone here. And I was looking at this right around this 175 to hold on it. AIMD. Mm, butter. Mike D says PLTR could be a good buy at this price. PLTR. PLTR Palantir. Uh, I think you can do better. I think you can get better. Here's the uh, monthly chart for Palantir coming into this little depression. I mean, the the what looks like the previous bottom here was right here at the 1376. That would be an even better buy. And then it's got this uh, slight trend. I think I looked at this one before as well. Um, down to 11. So, I mean, you could wait and try to get 13s. Uh, you could get better prices down here, looks like. And plus, looking at the monthly, it's had last month was red. That uh, this month, or wait, yeah, this is what is this? Yeah, this month is red as well. So I like to wait for things to kind of consolidate before I buy into them. Um, but or at least be at a actual low point, like thirteen seventy five right here makes more sense than out here because this thing could still dump from 16 down here three dollars to 13 something and you could get those better prices um on the daily chart let's see what kind of gaps it has down here see it's got this whole gap that it's trying to fill here on the daily chart came up gapped above this this whole gap so 1486 is where i would actually start looking to buy and then you know add in maybe around 13 but yeah at this point yeah it's a it's just a in in la la land for trades right there but yeah i will back off and look at the higher time frames monthly weekly daily and look at those gaps that it's trying to fill uh jumping back over to aimd <clears throat> under four dollars SGD did get into this zone right here very quickly and, and just got out of there very quickly. Didn't really get all the way to the 175s. Got bought over the uh, $2 and looking like it's going to do its first break right there. 205s breaking over. So. Let's look at. Well, that's pretty much. That's pretty much it right now with PLTR. If you're trying to hold it long term, I don't know how how long you're going to be holding that or if it's a day trade. But if it's a day trade, possibly. But, um, you know, I think there's some better buying if you're doing a longer term hold. And does that thing pay dividends? PLTR? Nope, it does not. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know on that one. I don't know what kind of trade it is for you. SGD getting on up to the two tens. So it touched this little zone that we saw here and got out of it very quickly. Now with this with this um this opportunity for shorts to enter here high before it tests the 175. 175 may be a little bit dangerous. I'd like to see what happens if it cracks it and then reclaims the 175. Uh, but now it's pulling back a little bit off of this 211 because that was an opportunity for shorts to get in definitely because just like longs like to trade the first candle of the day first candles of the day shorts will also employ that uh, same strategy so we'll see if two dollars if they can get it back below two dollars we got it is 836 right now first six minutes of the day and this thing has a lot of time to play around back over to aimd Again, it had a much weaker catalyst than uh, than SGD, 
even though SGD is just a continuation. So I'm thinking SGD is going to be the stronger, stronger name on, on today. I will call you back, buddy. All right. So Admux went ahead and crashed out, just going down. That's why I was thinking it wasn't it wasn't gonna be a computer on the day. AIMD looking weaker and weaker. Lori said 350 may be the spot. We'll see what happens on that 350 call out. But um yeah. All right, SGD back in the red. So shorts took that opportunity to get in and looking for this thing to retest the 183s and possibly the 175s. One thing that I do like to notice is where the battle of these uh, candles is going on. Right now, the battle is towards the low side or the low part of this previous red candle. So this was the momentum, the downwards momentum, and the battle is going on right there at the bottom. So I'm like, okay, either shorts are really going to take control and knock this thing through, um, or this, this whole candle needs to close and show me that it can hold above the previous low, which is 196, right? That's kind of how I look at the candles. Where Where is the war going on on this thing? So 196, slight hold there. And of course, I usually, if I'm doing that, I'll be doing it on the 15 minute. I kind of use the same time frame at all times to do entries and exits and all of that. So because I, I noticed in my trading, like, let's say if I was using the, the two minute one day, the one minute another day, the five minute, my trading was super inconsistent because the, the, the candles mean something different, you know, uh, on the one minute, it may be very, very a whole bunch of candles that mean one thing. Right on the five minute, may be a whole bunch of counters that mean one thing. 15 minutes still, a bunch of counters, but all of them, you know, I kind of like to just use that one time frame to be like, okay, this is what this is doing. This is where the weakness is, this is where the strength is, whatever. So it is holding that two dollars right there a little bit, but this candle still has some time. Can it close this whole candle above that one, um, 195 ish level? You got about five minutes left on this candle. And this is the 15 minute candles. So now the war is moving back up towards the top side of this candle. 205s. And we can see right here, 205, look at that, look at those numbers, 200, 200 was not able to break that 205. Let's see if 205 continues to hold this thing. Still, every time it gets there, 200 something. And I think these are um, these stand for 100. So that's a pretty good amount of size there to 205s that it needs to be broken through. We can see over here what the volume is uh doing over here. 205 steel, not a whole lot of even up. Oh, there was a pop through there. There's a big jump on that volume. 
Okay, 208. Now the question is, can it close above that 205 that it just had issues with? 213s, 214s. So the war is ending around that top, over the top, right? Looking back here, let's see, 220s was a previous level that showed a little bit of a sell-off up here, 220s. And uh, the point of resistance was a 205, <clears throat> right back down through that. Shorts took another opportunity. And now where's the war zone ending? Right at the end. This is why we wait for candles to close, man. On the time frame that you study, right? See the overall picture of what's going on because you can get into something and get absolutely chopped up if you don't have the study time on that particular time frame. So now the war has moved all the way back down. <laughs> and now they're in a terrible spot because shorts know, okay, we saw the first time it came up here. Yeah, it got a little blowout, but it failed. And now a second time failing, shorts are like, okay, let's look, let's get this breakdown of 184 if possible. And now look at the buyers trying to protect that 195 level, that level right there at the bottom of this previous candle. See it come back down. We'll probably see these numbers go up again. Got about two minutes left on this one 15 minute candle. 195, look at those. It's continuing to decrease numbers here at the 195 on the buy side. So it's got 161. Can they go ahead and knock through that? Can we see like 50 there? Yep, there's 20s. Ah, somebody's just sitting there hoping, but I think the shorts are in control right now. One ninety five back to it. There was two hundred right there. Three hundred increasing that that uh whoever's sitting there at that two hundred five or one ninety five. Three hundred, three hundred. All it takes is one snap of this neck. One big short coming in. All right. So got off of that, still trying to hold up that 195. Next candle will be opening up in, you know, 30 seconds. But still relatively low on the candle. I mean, this does not look bullish. It's, it's kind of hovering that 195, waiting for that next candle to open. And we'll see if people jump the gun, because there's a lot of high volume on this one. And see if people say, oh, man, this thing is right there about to break down. Let's just jump into it. Right through the 195. Here it goes. The next candle about to open. Let's see if they try to hit it off and jump in. Let's go shorts. Do y'all's thing. 195 beating down on this 195 because they know they got a full candle to go. Let's see. Wow, got blown out of there at that 195 a little bit, but still making a higher low. So the previous high was 215. What is the probability that this candle goes back up there? I mean, it could double top. If it does go back up there on this candle, it could double top, but this is a higher low starting. Not higher low, a lower high. I just heard myself. I was like, what did I just say? And only four cents away from that previous battleground of 195. Let's jump back over to uh, AIMD. Making its way on down to the 350 level that Lori had called out. So 357, 356, getting very close to that level. 
Now this level had trading in this area twice. So right around here where this area acted as resistance and it got blown through and then right around here is it acted as support and it kept going higher. So again, the catalyst on this one was uh, it regained NASDAQ compliance, uh, minimum bid price uh, requirement, right? It's so not a super strong catalyst, but we'll see. SGD. Just not getting to that zone yet. Okay, got a little bit of buying pressure, but did not get an exact touch on that uh, 350. Stopped right at the th 357, so kind of got in there um, just a little bit. You know. Still, though, this one has a lot of time, and let's look at the relative... So it's got 16 million compared to SGD's, um, what, 19 million in the, in the uh, volume. So more people still kind of showing interest over here into SGD. But relative to its normal days, SGD is only 10 times 10x relative volume, while AIMD is 400 times. Again, forming what looks like it's going to be a lower, uh, lower high here, unless it can really get aggressive and get toward, get past that two sixteen, two thirteens, two thirteens. It tried, almost a double top, got close. not able to break out on that little push though <clears throat> now at this point if you're short <clears throat> where do you put your stop right if you are shorting this thing 216 of course it went up to 250 so you could get blown out if it well getting over that little breakout of the 216 and trying to hold over it now. So holding over this previous indecision, somebody's interested in this thing going up now, seeing the indecision. Plus we know that shorts are probably trapped in here from the 195, looking for it to break on down. So let's see if it can, wow, what's going on there? Wow. Okay, back to the 205s, there it goes. Pole uh, just popped up. Don't know what it's doing, what kind of volume does, oh, only a million shares traded, it just popped up, okay, never mind. Anyway, back down to the twos. So that's crazy, man. Barely touched this little level here and then broke out and then the fail breakout statistic came into place right there. So now the question is, can it hold up this previous uh, red candle back here of the 204s as support? Or will shorts win again? Uh, Mike D says, would be a swing trade for PLTR. The calls pay 2.5% per week. Hmm. Swing trade. Let me look back at that. PLTR. So, yeah, definitely. If it's going to be a swing trade, I would definitely be looking at those uh, points that, that was we looked at before. Right down at this bottom. You know, 14-ish. Looking for it to hold up. Or at least at least let this, let's, this uh, monthly candle show you some buyers coming in there. Because, you know, 
it just needs more confirmation, I guess. But it also depends on, you know, how long you've been watching this stock and what, what moves that you've seen it make. Because uh, I'm just coming over just looking at it just straight on what it's showing on the charts. And I really don't know the, um, what's the, the fluidity, the, the motion in the ocean on this stock, you know. But just based on the technicals is what I'm looking at. But I think you'll be able to get at least 14.25 in the upcoming weeks. 14.25 right on this bottom. And at least if you get 14.25, you know, it's got this little uptrend coming through from back here 2023. So you could just kind of use that trend as a out for that. And if it doesn't hit the trend or if it gets close and you're like, okay, well, I just want to add on this trend. Add on that trend and get your average down below what thirteen or or fourteen dollars thirteen eighty sevens, and then just let it ride the trend if it's going to trend up, if it's going to continue trending up. Okay, jump back over to AIMD. Another attempt to go down and then popping back up to three seventy three and SGD. So these are some choppers. They really aren't super explosive into one direction yet. I don't know if they're going to be. But we had the failed breakout, so I'm thinking if it's going to go, it's going to go cuz it's already done the failed breakout and came back up. Looking for this 2020 break. Probably up here to what? 232s. 232s would be the next level. It's looking real bullish. We started seeing some 21s over here. It's over with. 18s, 17s. Let's see these 21s come up. Eighteens. Let's see 20s come back up at least. Tens. So that's two failed breakouts. Came up again, came back down. Hmm. Two sixteen. Just not seeing those sixteens come up. Just see it melt kind of back down towards the two oh fives, towards the two dollars. Yeah, these kind of plays. This is these are the kind of plays that I used to lose money on because, um, one, I was buying high, and I was willing to hold high. That was my downfall buy high and then willing to hold high like i'll be buying that 220 breakout and i'm like let's go i'm gonna hold it and i'll put my stop down here at uh like two dollars and be like okay let's get it now i kind of reverse that mindset where it's when it's down here i'm trying to buy and then i say okay where is the target area that i'm trying to get to as i'm buying so i get into my position and look for it to go and reach that target instead of buying up here and being so confident that it's going to hold. And I would probably be getting, you know, kind of chopped around emotionally uh, seeing this thing bounce back into that level. So this is the third go. Can we get through the 220s? 219s, looking over here on the tape. 218s. Where those? Oh, here it comes. That was some pretty big green right there. Let's see if it comes through. Looking for those long streaks of green. So is that three failures here? There's 18 again. 19, 19 20. All right, it's gone. Okay. So that's the that's the little bullish move after it's shaking everybody up. That's a really weak breakout, though. Wow. Okay, there we go. 
threw that out there and immediately back down. Okay. So I only got up to 20, 24 cents. So about eight cents there from that breakout. Not a whole lot of meat on the bone at all. All right, let's look back over at AIMD. Again, just in indecision out here. Back up to the 225s. And see, I'm just not patient enough to be holding something this cheap and this volatile to the highs. <laughs> I'm just not. Especially if I bought high. Like, I can understand if you bought the zone that we were looking at down here, 180s for this, but buying up here. Look, look what it's about to run into. It's going to have to be super bullish through this thing. 230, 233s, 235s. It's coming right into a uh, previous supply level. I just don't have the confidence. All right. Yeah, this one's just choppy, man. If it's going to go, it's like going like a cent, two cents, three cents, and then coming back down 10 cents. Go up two cents, three cents, come back down 15 cents. It's, it's, it's weak to the upside. Way too much momentum on those downward swings. AIMD. Still in indecision. Looks like it's finally wanting to get down to that um, 350 level, maybe. But with it kind of consolidating here, I don't know. Maybe maybe it'll go lower than 350. Maybe it'll need to come down here and test the $3 whole dollar level. We'll see. Back at uh, SGD. Again, I'm just not trusting this one. <sighs> Next C popping up with 20%, 20% up on the day. <clears throat> Is this a, we saw this one earlier um, this week, two days ago on the third, where it popped all the way up here to the tens. And now it's rising again on Nixie, seven dollars and thirty-five cents. It's got an ATR of a dollar as well. Let's see. Uh, but that relative volume and all of that stuff is off. Relative volume isn't even one times the the normal volume. So, gotta get gotta get some blessing there. And that standard deviation is zero, literally zero. But, you know, it's giving some opportunities, better opportunities than AIMD for sure. Uh, let me read some of these chats. Donnell says SGD long 211. Nice. Um, exited 227, much resistance, just chip uh, a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty much all you can do with it, chopping around like this. And that's a pattern that you really don't like to see. Very weak breakouts. Like they break out, but it's like five cents or three cents. And then given a much bigger pullback on off of that breakout. It's just like, bro, come on. Give me, give me, give me. I know you want to do this. Just give it to me. But that's what the market doesn't do. It just doesn't give it to you. It has to play out. So again, forming this lower high right above, right under this level. But with it chopping around like this, I don't even know if it's going to fall for real. It may just fake out and continue to grind higher. It's, it's moving like a grinder. Like it's going to eventually get up here to this level of the 232s. Jump over to Nixie, Nixie, poll, AIMD, open up its next candle. Oh, all right, well, it is 9 o'clock. 
um i am going to be jumping off of here but yeah sgd is looking like the one that's uh, going to give the most potential on the day these other two next and aimd just aren't getting it man they're just not getting it but anyway that's the first week of trading on on january i've been looking for some better catalysts next week hopefully uh, now that the jobs reports and prices are coming down, people will have a little bit more money to throw. So I want to capitalize on that when a, you know, a new catalyst comes out, good catalyst comes out. And uh, I'm just just looking for some nice trades, some nice, confident, thesis driven trades. Because when I get in, I'm holding. I'm pretty much, I put my risk in place and I'm like, look, this is my line in the sand. Even if it gets close, like sometimes it gets like within a cent and doesn't stop me out and just goes right back up. And I'm like, amen, you know. So now it's forming what looks like more of a double top here on the 15 minute. It needs to go ahead and break that. It doesn't need to let that sit there because that's definitely looking like a double top. But it did this before where it looked like a double top and blew through there. So patterns, man, repetition, cycles is what could be occurring here. I know one thing, if I was a short, I would not be shorting here. And if these shorts are stuck in here from 195, you know, their stop out is coming up. <laughs> it's coming up What 240. They're going to be trying to get out of there. Two forty up to two fifty is way too much. That's what from two. That's a fifty cent loss for the shorts on this one. If it starts to break over, and we'll probably see more thrust through here, more buying through here as those shorts get off those positions. Okay, AIMD. I'm gonna take that one off. It's trash anyway. Next C still doing his thing. So yeah, top two. SGD and Nixie and Nixie isn't even a top volume mover. It doesn't have any kind of news on today either. All right. So SGD, man, looking to break some backs on Friday. Anyway, I'm about to get off of here and uh, go and do something else. Uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, Donnell got his chip off the off the table today. Um, and you know, sometimes that's what you got to get. You got to get those base hits, man. It, especially if you have the strategy and you have the data backing you up, just get your base hit, man. Get your, get your base hit, you know? Uh, but yeah, that is it for me today. I will be back on Monday morning. Um, and we'll see if we can get some good catalysts to drop next week. We know that the AI is circulating. We know that, um, a lot of the jobs market is circulating, a lot of you know um, cyclical consumer cyclicals are circulating as prices come down as inflation comes down people are more willing to buy like TVs and all the stuff that they don't really need they pretty much just want and so we'll see if the stock market or if um, a particular ticker can draw people in with that extra money But SGD coming back down right now. And that was that was pretty much the one on the day that I ended up watching. But yeah, that is it for me today. I appreciate you guys once again. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.